Hello, welcome to the Witch's Smoking Room. This is When We Cry Podcast. This is the miscellaneous Umineko episode. Um, I'm Mushroom, and these are my, um, I guess, uh, friends who are going, <laughs> witches, fellow witches, um, here to talk about this topic. Hello, I am Des. Hello, I am Sayome. Okay, um, all three of us are here today. We are going to talk about Last Note of the Golden Witch, which is the bonus arc that Yukishi dropped, like, last year? Last year, October, right? Yeah, around that time, yeah. He just shadow dropped it. <laughs> Wait, it's that recent? I didn't know that. It, yeah, it was super recent. I was completely blindsided by this. Before we get into it, all the discussions, let's just talk about what happened last note of the Golden Witch. So the whole last note of a Golden Witch starts with Balor, Angie, and Beatrice having a tea party in the witch's smoking room. Isn't it super like domestic of them? <laughs> it's so nice. It's cozy. I thought it was really cute. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Super cute. I this that's what I imagine what it's like to stay in the Golden Land where Angie and Beatrice just like fight over Battler. <laughs> and um after them with their own like debacle, their own shenanigans, a witch is reveal herself and Ooh. it's peace. The witches of peace. Peace peace. Peace peace. She has <laughs> blue hair and an outrageous dress. Um <laughs> It's a very... <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, um, I think it's a very Umi Neko answer arc character. Like, yeah. you could clearly tell <laughs> that, like, Yukishi completely went a different direction when he finally got to answer arc, and he's like, I can finally make the most outrageous, like, witch's character possible now. Zepar in food food. I love them. Leave them alone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I love the design. I really like her um, sweeps. The sweeps of her dress, like, that's the the cherry on top of it. <laughs> yeah, but they look cute. It's very nice. Uh, so inside of the fragment, they're like starting this new fragment now because peace is like here because of feathering to like start this whole new possibility. Like a, like this fragment where Kinzo Usunomiya is having this Halloween party, kind of like the pilot of the Golden Witch. And then Peace, like, shows up in the rain, but, like, Peace couldn't get in because there's, like, a quote-unquote magic barrier by Ooh, Shannon yeah. told by Beatrice to, like, secure this place. Of course, Rudolph and Kiria, like, the 80s um, teens who want to go make out in the woods, <laughs> are almost like... <laughs> they are. Oh my god, that's exactly what they are! <laughs> It never occurred to me. That's exactly yeah, what they are. Like, what? it was really funny because it's, like, pouring outside. Like, it's, like, completely, like, it's, like, a horrible weather. And then Kitty is, like, hey, Rudolph, want to go make out in the woods? <laughs> and then Rudolph, of course, as an idiot he is, is, like, yeah, sure, like, <laughs> let's go. And I thought it was really funny that you you can see both, like, Angel and Balor being extremely unimpressed by, like, oh, well, I guess, like, now we're just feeding the the yeah. culprit like some dead bodies now like and like there's another oh, screenshot that I took while I was playing it which is where like like Will Battler and Angel is more like serious and annoyed that they're watching his family like watching their family getting slaughtered meanwhile like Beatrice in the back is like eating popcorn yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that was so good <laughs> I love that scene so like I was like this is serious so like um, a family watching like Netflix vibe. Like I was just like, this is super funny. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, like yeah, it all- this is Beato's gem. Yeah, and it also said like that the humans were ready to leave their hearts behind, and while while, while Beato is just sm- snacking on some popcorn. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, and then, so, yeah. so when Rudolph and Kitty goes out and, like, start making out, uh, they, they see this, like, little girl, like, she's, like, maybe, like, let's say she's 14, or maybe not, who knows, who knows with the new Kishi, so, like, this girl, Peace, who's mm-hmm. just, like, Peace, Peace. <laughs> Peace, peace. She didn't say anything, and they're like, "Hey, are you like a magician? Are you here to entertain people? Like, hey, welcome into the family." And then suddenly, <laughs> peace like extends her like hair, and then wrap Kitty up, and then swallows swallows her whole, and then she disappears in her like <laughs> hair, essentially, and then she just like she's gone, and I. And and then Rudolph is like, oh, mm-hmm. my wife. And then two seconds later, he's like, oh, <laughs> hi, Peace. You're my wife. Wait, you're my wife. <laughs> so um, now uh, Rudolph yeah. is like, 
totally weirdly on board with this like weird blue hair witchy girl being his wife and Rudolph has no memory of Kitty at all like and now like Angel as the idiot she is was like what is this I don't get it and then Fowler's like do you not see this is like the worst kind of possible murder like usually my text P swallowed up Kitty and then as and also replaces her. Both like Angie and Balor are extremely annoyed. He's like essentially lives Oh, are you afraid now? Like coward before me <laughs> like kinda like that. <laughs> and then like everybody is just silent and then suddenly like Beatrice is like, Haha, this is hilarious. I am so happy you're here. Yeah. Like we would have been so bored. <laughs> Thank you for bringing us a good show. Like, <laughs> did you think I was gonna like cry and beg because you like swallowed up a person? Like, have you even seen our fucking game board? Like, we take anything. <laughs> oh, who has that crazy noise happening in the background? Uh, I think Sayama just got transported to the to the game board, and she's now outside too. Oh, is, is Sayama dropped out of the game board? <laughs> <laughs> Sayama, you're the new detective. Congratulations! Sammy, are you good? I um, do you want to disconnect? <laughs> it sounds so crazy. Hello. What? It sounds like Sammy's like mic is like tumbling in the oh, wind. No. What happened? No, don't yeah. make me. Yeah, it's, it's no. <laughs> okay, I, I guess you wait. Hello. Damn. I guess I, I guess Hello? Sayome is no more. Be swallowed, Sayome. No. Yeah. Oh no, it, that's so true. Hello. Hello. Hey, okay. We can hear you now. Damn. Okay, welcome back. We were at the first turnaround point, basically. Let's keep going then. So they ask Peace, like, what is what is the win condition of this game? Peace tells yeah. them that the win condition of this game is for them to answer correctly who Peace mm -hmm. is. Like, and Peace is a person that has been mentioned between EP1 and EP8. And somebody that all three of them know. And since... Beatrice thought it was funny to, like, or not funny, but Beatrice thought it was proper to essentially set a guideline for them. Um, Beatrice said that we only have one mm -hmm. chance, we only, we can only guess who Peace is until, like, all three of us agree, which is Angie, uh, Battler, and Beatrice. So that's the win condition. Yeah. So, yeah. like, still inside of the fragment, a six year old mm -hmm. Angie suddenly appears at this, uh, party and then six-year-old angie shows up and like looks at peace and was like you're not my mother yeah, my you're mom. not my mom yeah and then and then she gets <laughs> sold up yep and then peace was like <laughs> you're not my mother oh i'm not your mother you you're telling me i'm not your mother okay you just wait yeah exactly like Go peace on. is like yeah. i will show you who's your mother and then just swallows angel up <laughs> and then angel's just gone and then angel was like okay great crazy <laughs> After all, like, Peace swallowed up Angel, uh, Peace is like, hey, we're gonna skip a bunch of parts of the fragment because I don't want to write about it. And mm -hmm. then now you jump to the next scene, which is... No, it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, Peace not mm -hmm. wanting to write about it. It was uh, the gang not wanting to lose time, waste time, like, watching a magical battle. Yeah. And, like, they, they just want to, to get to the meat and potatoes, you know? Yeah, I think that's just, I really like that detail. It's just kind of like, it. whatever, we're just gonna skip over all the boring stuff and then let's get to the <laughs> interesting parts. So, so now we jump to the yeah. next scene, which is when Beatrice, Kingsol, uh, uh, Beatrice, Kingsol, Shannon, Cannon, and Genji fight against Peace. However, every time when Peace is like fighting with them, one person slowly, slowly starts disappearing, like sh she starts swallowing up people. And then everybody's like, wait, do we already, do we always had five people? Do we always had four people? And in the end, the only person that's still fighting yeah. with peace is Beatrice. That's such a scary problem. Yeah. Imagine yourself in that situation, like, bruh. Yeah. So like, in the end, peace is only it's fighting scary. with Beatrice, and then Good. Beatrice got erased from existence. <laughs> hey, baby, I so, um. What if it was all just a dream? It's all just a dream. <laughs> 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 so... Um, after all that happened, Angel in the meta world is starting to like craft theories. So like Angel was like, Hey, you know who I'm gonna call? My comrade Erica Bruno. Erica. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding. Like, nothing brings me more, like, yeah. hilarious joy so when cool. I just hear, like, Angel says, like, Comrade Erica, and then Erica shows up, like, Comrade Angie. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> so cool. like, what kind of USSR, like, <laughs> it's, like, so funny. <laughs> Yeah. Epic. The anthem just starts playing in the background instead of the the usual background <laughs> game music. Yeah. Yeah, so so Erica shows up and NJ just crafts this up the theory where like Erica shows up on the island, gets super mad because she got tricked by the family, and then that's why she killed all these people. But then after she, like Not after she, she, And then Beato turns to <laughs> like there there's a, a really funny line here. Beato just turns to, to Angie and is like, no, or Batra, I don't know. But someone tells to Angie straight up, <laughs> yeah. Angie, are you really making an Erika Copert theory? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, what the fuck? Yeah, I think that was really funny because <clears throat> so both Beatrice and Balor was like, I don't think so. Like, you, we are not dragging Erika into this. <laughs> and then, so, um, so like, while, like, like all three of them are like debating who like um who like peace could be like Balor start like losing his shit and like start crying profusely in the background yeah. as he does and then like as he and does. then Agent That's is like fun. I don't understand what's going on and then peace is like well the re like the thing is I <clears> kill all those people because it's not because I wanted to kill them. I wanted to kill everybody who's else who is still there. And then, like, and then Angel's like, "What the fuck does that even mean?" And then, and then, meanwhile, Fowler is like still like crying super hard in the yeah, background. That's so miracle. <laughs> and then, like, suddenly, Fowler is like, "I, I, I understand who you are now. You are my mother, Asumu." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> the idea is that. Uh, we're gonna open the curtains now. So the answer of who peace is is that peace is Asumu in a world where Asumu didn't die and she maintained her position of Usuma family. And so that's why Rudolph would never marry Kitty. And if she never married Kitty, there wouldn't be any Angie. Or maybe Angie would still exist, but like not here at least. Nah, yeah, I, I think actually Angie actually did uh, come to exist. Yeah. But- she never moved to the Ushiramiya register because Rudolf never acknowledged her existence. Yeah, basically. so yeah. so if Angie never existed a part of the Ushiramiya family, then yeah. Fowler would never leave the family. Then he would probably be able to continue his yeah. relationship with Sayo or Yasu. So this is when yeah. the game cruelly flashes an image of Fowler and like and Yasu. So I'm gonna cry. 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 So I have sift on my laptop. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. Stop being used to me. So okay, let's let's move on from that scene, and then essentially like. Even so, like the idea is that saying that, like, well, even if Gingzo put out the epitaph, like, um, Sayo and Battler would have been able to reach the answer because Yasumu, uh, Asumu would help them. Yes. <laughs> Asumu. Yes. Um, uh, and then, uh, and like, and like, Cross will never, and Asumu would be, Asumu, yeah, Asumu would be so smart, so would be able to even tell if Kingzo was dead, so Cross would like never be able to like, do that or like cross would never mm-hmm. have any reason to hide king's Souls death because they would solve the asumu other. is so overpowered she had to be nerfed she had to yeah be exactly okay. or Minek wouldn't exist bro and then genji would probably leave because his love yeah. of his life king's Souls dead <laughs> <laughs> honestly i didn't really believe that because i feel like he would maybe keep being with yasu at least forever because like he feels yeah that's what i thought this is proof that it's exactly. in the wood and like, is the only real truth those are teachers supreme <clears throat> nothing I'm joking. Yeah, I think like I think we could start digging into how legit is all these claims after we start talking yeah, about the discussion. Sorry. But uh, I totally agree. Okay, so like okay, okay so um, <laughs> no, I disagree. You disagree? Okay, we, we're, we're we're gonna fight about it later. Don't worry. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. in the end, like peace is like I'm super sorry, NJ. Like I did all of this just to spite you. Mm-hmm. Like this mm-hmm. this narrative was co- like was crafted just yeah. to fuck with you. Like just to cause your pain. <laughs> Peace just kind of tells Angie, and it's like, you know, Angie, if if you weren't a powder Ushiromiya family, then you would probably be able to relieve of all their troubles. 
but don't have you don't have to think about that way because we live in this reality and you exist and your love for your brother is real and i'm like what like <laughs> So, uh, so like that's the end, and then they're like, "Okay, peace. You're actually Ushimi Asumu," and she's like, "Thanks for knowing who I am. Peace, peace, bye, bye." Yeah. And like, that's the end of peace, essentially peace. last note of the Golden Witch, the story part of it. Um, there's a there is a yeah. tea. Do you want to cover the tea party first, mm-hmm. or do you want to talk about like what happens in this one first? Let's talk about what happened. Yeah, let's let's talk about the actual episode. Okay, first. let's talk about it. So, give me your opinion. Yeah, okay, yeah. so starting with the broader gimmicks, starting with that with that frigging comedy. Viewed, I mean, it was funny, but still, Ryukishi, what the fuck was that between Angie and Batra at the start, man? <laughs> what? Why? Yeah. Can't you just have a, a, a normal? Broader I don't think Ryukishi in, understands in your... that concept. Like, if it's you Japan. have ever, like, if you think about mm. what he has been writing, like, I think, like, how do I say, like, I think reading a hun- like a hundred and eighty <sighs> hours of Umi Neko or like Higurashi has completely scrapped us of the parts where like Ryukishi is just like blatantly problematic because we only remember the good parts, and then you go back and read EP one, yeah. and you're like, "Bad Lurk, stop! Like, stop <laughs> sexually harassing your like six, like nine year old, like a uh, younger sibling, like, younger cousin. Like, <laughs> please stop." Oh, oh uh, yes. But still, we we have to we we love oh, his writing, but we have enough. to acknowledge that sometimes he just he just has some weird decisions, man. Yeah, I mean it's Japan, you know. So yeah, I mean it's Japan's culture, I guess. Yeah, but still, it's still problematic. So you know. So let's talk about like peace. Like, okay, so um, peace, 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 peace. Like, did you guys like her like design? Like, did you think she was out of place? I love. I love her design. It's so cool. Even if she even starts as Erika, and only then does she reveal herself yeah. as Peace. She's like the next Erika. This like, is a bold claim. <laughs> That's mm, a bold claim. She's like, I want to see Peace and Erika interact. Those two together would make such a good like yeah. product, you know? I want to see those That's two interact. That's true. Just, I mean, just, I seeing them as combos would be interesting. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're both under like Fezzadin. Like, it yeah, been, I mean, and um, Featherine is like the most OP person in Uineko possible. Yeah. Mm. So let's just get like a general overview. Like, yeah. Des, did you like it or hated it when you read this? The episode yeah. in general? Just like the story part of it. Man, I, I just don't understand how this can be a ninth episode. After all of this training we've had for eight yeah. episodes, this mental training to think in Umineko and to understand Umineko. And then this guy just drops this this episode with such an easy fucking solution. Like it's so it's so easy. Even if as as a reader, it's completely understandable if a reader doesn't doesn't get it that easily. But Beato, Beato created the rules of the game. How does she not see through this? What? <laughs> and Batra 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 fucking and broke <laughs> Broke the, the he, he fucking he found the codes. He just he understands Beato. He understands the game board. He understands the rules as much as Beato does. I understand. I can I can buy Angie not understanding the solution. But my God, those two. How do those? How, how do they not find the truth after the first incident? How? I, it I just doesn't fit in my mind. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. So- I mean, so you were able to solve who uh, Peace was after Peace swallowed up Kiria? Kinda. I, I, I had a, a really strong suspicion after that because I was like, okay, the only people who can enter the mansion are people from the Hushiromiya family, right? Who do we know is part of the Hushiromiya family? This, 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 and this. Oh, wait, there's someone else that is part of the Hushiromiya family that isn't actually... In the mansion, and that's fucking Asumu. What if it's Asumu? And then, and then the, the evidence just keeps popping up one after another. Kiria is swallowed up, Anji swallowed up. Like the evidence, like, it's all there. Like I had really strong suspicions when Kiria was swallowed up, but the moment Anji got a swallowed up, like the moment Anji disappeared from the game board, I was like, okay, it's Asumu. It's it has to be Asumu. Come on, come on, Ryukishi. And then I was like. Crossing fingers the whole episode 
for it not to be Asumu. Because, like, okay, it's Ryukishi. Ryukishi likes to, to, <laughs> to, 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 to do these things with us. He likes to trick us. He, like, he's obviously misleading us. Obviously. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna be Asumu. And then it's fucking Asumu! What? <laughs> That's funny. I mean, I think I... I didn't dislike it. Like I did, I did think the mystery was easy, but I didn't dislike it from a narrative point of view. Like I like the building up to it, and like uh, how do I say? It? I kind of hate the fact yeah. that it's called EP Nine, the last note of the Golden Witch, because I was like, this has yeah. nothing to do with like Beatrice. Like Beatrice didn't write this. Like you, it shouldn't. Like for example, like our confession doesn't have like an EP like number mm-hmm. in front of it. Like. It's just called Our Confession, which I really like. Yeah. And, like, this doesn't deserve an EP title, but I thought it was, like, a really funny, like, side story, like, prologue afterwards. True. Uh, okay, so what was your thoughts, at, like, um, uh, Sayome, when you first read it? Like, did you like it, hated it? I really like, like, the interactions, like, between the characters, because I love Umineko, so, you know, I'm gonna love this. So, <laughs> yeah. At times, you know, the ending was pretty good. Like, I swear to God, I almost cried because, like, I don't know. It's just the emotion so... hits the point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I know. And because I'm a cry baby. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I made fun of the part where Angie, uh, Angie and Asumu's like interaction in the end, like the very heartfelt one. Yeah. Like, it's actually really emotional and like and like yeah. good to read. However, um, I do want to talk about the implications mm-hmm. now because. Okay. okay, so this is this was my argument with Des right after I read it. So Des didn't like it because Des said this was too easy, and uh, but you liked the parts where Asumu. It, it like, was like was this: the you you, you were saying that you don't like how Asumu is basically the key to the to the happy ending. Like just, as the simple factor of Asumu changes the whole the whole story. That's what he's saying. You didn't like it was. It was too easy to change the whole yes. the whole world. It was too easy to reach the happy ending. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. what what you talking about? That's the only part I liked. And I actually really fucking liked <laughs> that aspect of episode 9. That's what our discussion was about. <laughs> I, so I think I just threw out the line. I was like, I think Asumu is too arrogant. And you're like, <laughs> what? And I think... So what I said was that like I think it is super arrogant for Asumu to declare like if I was alive then like none of this tragedy would have happened and I so like for example she says like I will help I would help like Battler and Yasu with like his their problems I would help them solve the epitaph and then yeah. like and like and now like Yasu would have money and she would be able to dis- like uh, distribute the gold between the siblings and then like and that would be all done and i was like but like meanwhile i'm sitting here and i'm like what kind of savior complex does like Asu but, have but she has credit like, like if she didn't have credit mm-hmm. but she does she 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 actually like she isn't just being arrogant and and like looking down on others just because she actually has credit to do the thing. Yeah. You know? But like, who knows what that actually means? So that's when I decided to say, like, first thing is, I don't believe Genji would have left. Yeah. I don't believe that he would leave yeah. the island because the thing is, is that like, it doesn't even matter if Kingsol is dead and or Kingsol's name has like, or Kingsol has been dead to the public because like, like, Genji still has more blood on his hand. Like, you think, like, is is Genji just gonna be a fucking coward and run away after, like, he yeah. just, like, after he picked up a baby that fell from a cliff, send that baby to, like, do you not have guilt, Genji? Like, don't you feel like you should at least, like, stay for a few years just to help Yasu to get the, like, get the company okay. pumping? Like, what, like, what does that even mean? And, honestly speaking, I personally think there's a lot of really small things that could have prevented the tragedy mm-hmm. that I don't think Asumu had, like, the right to dismiss it. Like, Asumu is like, well, like, if I survived, then none of the tragedy would happen. And I was like, well, a lot of, like, a yeah. lot of things could have prevented the yeah, tragedy. Yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that she could also prevent the tragedy, no? Yes, but, like, she, she presented, and, okay, 
Also, I don't know if you found this part weird or I was the only one who thought it was weird, but I thought it was super weird for, like, Asumu to be like, hey, Angie, um, I wrote this fragment just to, like, piss you off, but, like, do you understand that because you were born, you literally just caused the death of all your family and now you're the only one alive? Like... <laughs> Like, oh like do you think, like, think about implication. Um, like, that's, like, like, I don't know. Like, I'm not saying that this is, like, like, I don't give a flying fuck how nice, like, Asumu is. <laughs> but, like, pulling that on your only, like, one of the only living survivors of your son's younger sister is a dick move. <laughs> yeah, it is. And she's just mm-hmm. a punching bag of the witches. First yeah. it's Beato, then it's Bear, now it's Peace. Right, yeah. Because the thing is, like, I gr- I do agree, Asumu living could have changed the course of Lokenjima. However, I'm not sure it would be as successful as you claim it to be. Because if you think about it this way, like, like I brought this up in my argument with Dust, and I was like, think about EP7 and, like, the whole idea of, like, Leon, like, Leon grew up to be a very happy and, like, successful adult person, but that did not fucking stop the, like, and, oh, there was no Apatath, there's no Beatrice, the only, the only biggest lie, I guess, in that case, is that, like, Leon is actually the, 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 the child of, like, Beatrice too and Kingsel, oh, like, it did not stop the family from, like, going, like, ape shit and then start killing each other anyway and like Ooh. that's a huge diversion like like in a way it's the same kind of diversion that this like story has which is like beatrice is not there like like i guess like kitty like the whole thing about kitty has so happened yeah but but not yeah but on on episode nine like they would have the, the, the whole reason why a tragedy happened on episode seven was because they didn't have the money, and if Asumu helped the Batra and Yasu solve the, ep- the epitaph, then the whole family would have money, and that's that is the reason why there is no massacre I on episode guess, nine. But like, <laughs> but like, I think wouldn't Kira isn't there, but like, wouldn't Dudov still be kind of compelled? But like, I feel like Dudov was kind of like enabled by like Kira, but like, so maybe he would have. Some sort of design, and like, hmm. and I also think like about the money thing. Like, mm. so, so what, what, what you're actually saying, this is that Nazi gold solves could solve all the problems of Ushiromiya family. It could. We, that's one of the things I told you when we were discussing this. It all comes back to money if they had money, and Yasu wasn't a thing because of Asumu. What? Then, so like, did Kingsol? Because if you, if you have like, money, there King will Zul still be a tragedy. Fucking... Like, even also if the family come. has money, a tragedy <laughs> will occur because of Yasu. But, and if you mm. only have Asumu, and Yasu doesn't give the money to, to gold to the rest of the family, a tragedy will still happen because of the gold. It's only after you have both, um, uh, both, um, Asumu helping Yasu and Yasu sharing the gold. Only when those two factors are combined can you not have a tragedy That's, in the world I mean... of episode 9. So like, so what? What are I, so like? What we're just gonna assume is that like in EP seven, Kingzo is like, oh, I'm dying, and also like, hey, this is the <laughs> child that I know I had, I fucked with my like daughter to get. Also, I am sitting on ten million of gold, but like, I'm not gonna give it to the child that I had, like I love, who I also fucked with my love child, like. Like, you think, like, Kingsville just decided not to give that money to Leon. Like, at all. Like, it was just, like, not a thing. <laughs> or, like, not even, like, just, like, talked about it. Like, I mean, like, Genji knows that money exists. But wasn't, wasn't Leon, wasn't Leon about to become the head? Because, if I remember correctly, he wasn't the head yet, but he was about yeah, to Yeah, he was about the to head, become the head. Right? Yeah. And, well, and I guess once he became the head, he would he would get the gold. Yeah, but the family freaked the fuck out and then killed Leon anyway. <laughs> but but they 
did, did they have a guarantee that Leon would share the, share oh, the gold? Oh, so they dumb. Have a I kind of mm-hmm. hate it. I think, I don't know, like, it doesn't make me feel any better to know that Ushiro Mia family, like, how do I say, tragedy could just be prevented by money. But, like, the thing is, like, I guess there's two tragedies happening. The tragedy of the money, which are all the siblings' problems, and then tragedy of how Kingsel's penis who fucked everybody <laughs> over. Exactly. That's exactly why I'm what why I say that there are two factors in this. Yasu and the gold. It's not just the gold or just But like Yasu. the thing with the money is I feel like you know the Shlimath family isn't like the brightest, so I feel like they would have money problems a lot. <laughs> so you know I don't think that just you know a bit of money to like solve the current problems but save them in the long run. I feel like they will always have a bit of yeah. money problems. Yeah, I feel like they would always have money yeah. problems. It's like the thing that you like look into governments and you're like the government is making money. Also, the government owes another government <laughs> two billion dollars and you're like two billion dollars are what they wipe their ass with. And you're like, how is that even <laughs> real? Um, but I don't know. Like, I just I am not satisfied with it. That's what I think. Like, I think like during the co- like conversation I had with Des, like we brought up like other points where like like Des was like, "What about like this happened or that happened?" I was like, "There's a lot of." For example, I think one of the things we brought up was, "What if what if Natsuhi was able to conceive a child or like yeah. before like Eva?" And I was like, "If that happens, actually, that would also prevent the tragedy." Like if yeah, actually, this is wait wait Yasu wait. would never be I mean, interested to Natsuhi. This so. is the this is okay. This is how I'm gonna disprove. EP7. Okay, are you guys ready? Okay. What? 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 Okay. 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 Okay, so this is my this is my this is my crack cracked up theory. So think about this. Mm. In the very beginning of EP1, we were told that the reason why um ro- like Ushiromiya Eva was able to stay in the family is because Ushiromiya Eva during the time of Nazi unable to conceive a child said like, "Well, Nazi can't conceive a child, so please keep me in a family registry." And like, and let me, let my husband also take my name and then like, let me stay in the family and I would produce you an heir. Eva was like conceived with like George. And then she just went to the head of like, went to Kingzo and was like, here's my baby. Nazi he doesn't have any baby. Like, like keep me in the family. Yeah. And that's how Eva like strong armed herself in the family. So if you think about it in EP7, if Leon's there and Leon is quote unquote Nazi's <gasps> child, and nobody should have known that, like nobody should have known that, that like like Leon's not, Eva should have had no saying in saying in the family. So Eva shouldn't have been there. Eva, George, or Hideyoshi shouldn't have been. There. But like, maybe oh. I mean maybe the adults know, like maybe or maybe Kinsu never told them that um like the other adults or... that um Leon is an adopted child, but he just. Refused to like. No, we we could look at this in another way, I guess, because no, okay, no. Let's just confirm so those are cheated more. (laughs) God damn it! No, uh, I mark my mark my words. I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this sometime in the future. I'm gonna think Mm -hmm. about this and I'm gonna come back with an uh, with an explanation. Mark my words. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I the reason I'm just saying this is just because, like, I thought that was really funny. Because, like, yeah. I mean, I would imagine, like, after everything, like, after everything, even if, like, Leon, Leon was the first child of, like, Nazi, I could totally still see Eva finding her ways to worm herself back into this family. Not, because yeah. Ushiro Mia yeah. is her blood. Like, she would get herself back. But I just, I like... I just like the idea to be like, hey, what if that? Like, yeah, yeah. but like, I could totally see a very logical reason how she would she will be able to like do it because you could, from what you have seen of Eva, like throughout like all eight of the EPs, you could totally see her. Yeah, she doesn't able give up. To, like, she wouldn't give like up. no, yeah, no. She, she uh, yeah, but there's a there's a really easy uh, solution to this, which is the fact that episode seven is just a, a lot of different worlds stitched together. But I, I th- that that isn't. Like I'm not satisfied with that answer, but what you just said that Eva would, would she wouldn't give up. She would try to get back into the family, and I guess that's the most logical conclusion to come to. The, the reason Eva is, t- is in the family, even though Leon exists, is because she just wouldn't give up and would find a way to get herself back into the family. I guess 
that's a, yeah, that's definitely, a really yeah. understandable answer to all of this. But now, going back to EP9, to the Genji situation, because, like, I, I really don't like the story aspect of Episode 9, but I freaking love the world of episode 9 and it, it fits like a fucking glove on Umineko because look even though it, it sounds weird that Genji would abandon Yasu you've got to remember that the world of When They Cry is a world of possibilities and even if even if the probability of Genji leaving Yasu behind is one in a thousand the possibility is there you know so even if it was it had a low probability it could happen. So that's my explanation to that. And you you said you, you said mushroom <laughs> that you felt really uh, dissatisfied a lot of stuff on episode nine relating to to the fact not only to the fact that uh, the answer that Asumu was the answer to all of the problems seemingly and all of the other stuff related to to the world and how things are possible. I'm gonna I'm gonna say now what I told you on the private chat, which is that you've got to remember that episode nine isn't it, it, the the nature of episode nine isn't the same as the other eight episodes. The other eight episodes are possibilities that do exist inside of the cat box. Episode nine does not exist on the cat box. Episode nine was written outside of the cat box and put inside of the cat box. It was written by Feadrin. It wasn't written by Beato. It, it's basically a fanfic. Feadrin didn't write a story yeah, based on a possibility. Think... Feadrin created the possibility. It's yeah, like writing a story with ba- <laughs> where Batra has green hair instead of red hair. Like it is impossible for oh, Batra to have done. green hair, but you can invent a forgery in which Batra has green hair and put that inside of the cat pots. You know, that's my explanation. I think it fits like a glove. Yeah. Give me a bit of an like that. I think we talked about how, like, the difference between a forgery and a fragment. So, like, forgery is just, hey, what if my crack theory is real, like, could yeah. be real? <laughs> and, uh, and, a f- and a fragment is, is more like... An actual possibility inside of the cat box. Yeah, like an actual possibility. Yeah. I like about the whole Genji thing again. Because, like... I really don't feel like he would ever like leave the Ishima family to his death because of his whole work ethic thing. Like he calls himself furniture all the time. He like he sacrifices himself to uh the family, like in the official explanation, like with Sayo and stuff, because he feels like he ruined her he life. Up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And like how he feels indebted <laughs> to her. Also like how he is so indifferent to everything. Like remember in episode two when he like Brings Butler somewhere, or like she just informs him, yeah, like two cops appeared, and he's like totally emotionless. Like, I saw some he killed, so he killed them, so you know, it's just maybe this is my guess, Salome. Even though I do agree with you, maybe Genji is like, hey, like this child I like hid most of my life, like that I picked up from the bottom of a cliff. They turn out to be okay. Look at them. They now have money. Now they're the head of the family. Also, they have a boyfriend. So that's probably when I should dip out. Like I, so like Genji's like my 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 debt is paid. But like <laughs> and then leaves. But like wouldn't he stay with Sayu for the rest of his life and like eat them with Butler and stuff? Because that's what I feel he would do. Like his whole life revolves around like paying back the debt to Ishimi Kinzo. I feel like he would never. I feel like give Genji up. would feel that he himself died once oh. Kinzo died. Because look at <laughs> oh Genji's wife. Kinzo, Kinzo is yeah, Genji's yeah. wife, <laughs> basically. Once Kinzo dies, once Pog. Kinzo dies, Genji has no reason for living. Wow, this is the real poggers. Not only because of, <laughs> not not only because of how he lived his life, but also because of the furniture mentality. And the only reason why Genji stays in the family. Or on the other episodes, it's because Kinzo is alive, supposedly. Oh. You know? Yeah, but then so wouldn't Kinzo his, still be alive? For living, like, this is kind of still there. Okay, you know? so you're, what you're saying is that, uh, in a way, Genji exists in the same plane of, like, it's in the same, like, mental plane of, like, Shannon and Canon, which is, like, if the reason why they exist doesn't exist anymore, then they cease to exist. No, 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 no. okay. That's too metaphysical <laughs> for Genji. Genji is not on that point. What I'm saying is, like, imagine, you're someone who, who like, from a young age, your life was no longer yours. You started, from, from a young age, 
you you ceased being whoever you are now and you start your whole identity was the servant of someone very rich and you lived a life like that for like 50 60 years and then suddenly that person dies like your your identity dies too you know so do you, do you know what i mean like, i guess so sure <laughs> So, so like, I'm not saying he fucking poof disappears. What I'm saying is like, he just he would leave the family and then I guess return home until he well, dies. Does he even from, have a home? Yeah, I was gonna say. Like, I don't know. <laughs> he has. I, 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 I think I remember. I know he has family, but like, something about it's Genji's been fifty years. Like, I, I feel like Genji. Like, if if we really go down this road, that like Genji doesn't have any other identity as Kingzol. He looks like the type of person that after Kingzol dies, just walks into the ocean and never seen again. <laughs> 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 like not even swimming, he's just walking on the ocean floor. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh my god! Oh no! I'm, I'm, I, I just thought of the episode eight magic ending. Oh no! Oh no! Oh or like, yeah! Imagine Grinchy going into the ocean and he falls down and then he hugs Kinzo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Kinzo. <laughs> it's a Kinzo and Genji instead of Predator and Butler. Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh Kenji is like, oh, 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 King, so I can finally see you again. And they hug each other, and they go to the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I, I need to breathe. That's actually really funny. <laughs> I, I guess I, I I'm can... writing a forgery. <laughs> Just writing a forgery of Kingzo and um, Kingzo and Genji. Yeah. Yeah, I think. <laughs> but like, okay, look, do, let's do go back to like thoughts on like um e- like last note. Is that like I actually liked last note, despite of everything I said about it. <laughs> How do I say? Like, yeah. I think it's very. I feel the same. I just feel like it. It feels more like a side story, yeah, like when definitely, we make it to Laza, yeah. rather than an episode. Yeah, like I think Last Note was really interesting, and I like the conversation it brought up. I guess, like for True. me, I yeah. the only thing that I didn't really like exactly the reason why I didn't like the Asumu answer wasn't really all because of the fact that I was like, well, I wasn't impressed with the answer. It was also because like I always liked the fact that As- Asumu and Kingzol's wife were two characters that was always <laughs> brought up, but, like, never... Never yeah. became Kinzo's wife. Yeah, okay, so this is gonna be my crack theory now, but I think the tiger-looking orange girl is Kinzo's wife. Okay, did you read, um, like, oh, yeah. the one? Where, where does that character appear? I've seen her on the opening, but I just it's haven't in, seen uh, her. It's in, uh, like, the... Our Confession. Oh, is she in Our Confession? Yeah. Oh, Okay. okay. Okay, okay, then don't tell me about her yet. Okay. That was my that was my crack theory. But I was just like I just I like sometimes that there's just something about like like so I actually never understood why all the fans of the of the visual novel hated the manga because I really like the manga and I think like I like the fact that it spells out to you because then you actually get to enjoy the heart apparently, of the story. Apparently. Uh, supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like but like at the same time I finally understand like now because I'm like you know I don't need it to, I didn't need it to know that Asumu is like a fucking Jesus figure that could have saved everybody like no I deny this <laughs> like like I always I like the I not that I had a clear image of what Asumu would be like but like this was just not what I wanted like so I'm like I just wish that they never like overtly mm. told us that we're like well Asumu would have did this and I was like mm. great sure <laughs> like I guess yeah. I have to take it now <laughs> like is this how I should do it but I mm. like the I like the self-righteousness of Asumu I thought that was entertaining it makes her an interesting character I feel like whenever like a parent dies and like and Balor just like has such a like a ideal figure of like what he thinks like yeah. Asumu is yeah. so like it's fun to see her as like a kind of flawed character person like flawed in a way yeah. that she's like she kind of just steamrolls angie so i really would have wished like for there to be more like 
Asumu and Butler things. Like, it would have been cute. Like, I mean, he did cry a lot, but like, <laughs> maybe more. Yeah, like, I, yeah, that's also what I wanted. Being more sentimental. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I wanted them to carve deeper into but like, oh, Asumu, I like, I really wish you grew up to be my mother. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, I wish they went on more of the mushy, like, depressing part about the actual like reality of Asumu dying and mm. how that fucked with Battler yeah. forever. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and I think, um, does that conclude our thoughts on the story part about Last Note? I think it does. Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I, I'll guess i just quickly mention something I was trying to mention when you were doing summary, which is that part, that start, where when, when the game basically reveals that they were just acting and now they're getting serious. Like, I saw some hope on that, but then I guess they... They really are <laughs> dumb in episode 8, I don't know. Uh, another thing I really liked in episode 9, I think I just said episode 8 just now, I meant 9. But yeah, uh, something I really liked in episode 9 is the music. Yeah. Like, Rinkishi knows what good, good music he has. He chose the best it music. Is. Like, Prison Strip is in there. I think uh, Happiness of Marionette is in there too. Like, thank you, Rinkishi. Thank you. Yeah, it was a very good selection mm-hmm. of music. And, like, whenever anybody spoke, it just it perfectly syncs up yeah. mm-hmm. what they're, like, the, the text they're reading and the music. And it's, it really, like, it really lives up to, like, the sound and novel, like, thing. Like, yeah. it's just very good. I mean, it's Umineko music, mm-hmm. so. This was my first experience reading Umineko without voices, you know? Yeah. Like, it is something different. Like, I really got the, the classic vibe of, Umine- of Umineko from episode 9. It is. It's fun. Yeah. I still like yeah. the voices, but I guess it's something different. But yeah, should we move on to the tea party now? Yeah, yeah. let's move on to tea party. So now we're at the tea party, and now, like, Lambda Delta, like, Burn Castell, and Battler, and Jay, and Beatrice, and now, like, peace, peace. are all sitting around, and they're having tea. And mm. they're just, like, talking about, like, wow, that was pretty fun. That's cool. Like, and, oh, what a good <laughs> time we had. And that's when they start talking about, like, they're like, oh, do you think there was another person, like, there was a like a seventh person in our party like do you think that person existed and they're like well if there was like peace swallowed them up and we don't remember them and then there's like all these like very intense jab at like erica which i thought was like utterly hilarious there's some artist on twitter who drew that scene it, it's it's so good. You just see everyone inside of the inside of the building having fun. And then you've got Erica on a, a trash can on the outside with a with a Neva Beato portrait on the side. <laughs> That's how I imagine like it to be. And uh, I think there's like all these jabs where like Bird Castell is like, oh, you're trying to say that like, well, if there's a person out there that would like lick my hand after i slap them like of course i would l- want you to like take them away like i don't know who that person is but my... that person sounds disgusting I Erica, yeah. man. I feel bad for Erica. <clears throat> and then um and i think like that's the part when they start uh talking about all of the characters that could have been yeah. and th- and now we got <laughs> the real fun yeah. part of last night yeah. um, that was so exciting like yeah. I-, I had no idea like i read this i read this like two weeks ago, which is mm-hmm. about, I don't know, a year after episode 9 came out, and I didn't know this part, like, I didn't know Ryukishi revealed this stuff on the episode, yeah. you know, so I was caught off, off guard, it was so so fun to know that, hey, thanks Ryukishi, <laughs> this is nice. Yeah. Yeah, so one of the first things that they mentioned was that Natsuhi's character design was uh, supposedly the original character design of yeah. Yeah. Beatrice, wasn't it? It was yeah. shocking. Yeah. And and her hair was supposed to reflect Beato's fecal nature, yeah. supposedly. Like, I'm so glad Ryukishi, like, dropped that idea. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, Natsuhi? Yeah, and, I, and, like, and then Natsuhi even wears the Beatrice's dress and then tries to, like, act like yeah. all beatrice and I thought that was really cute. Yeah. True. And then... Just so and wasn't, wasn't Natsuhi's dress supposed to be the dress of Beatrice, like that purple dress, wasn't that also supposed to be Beato's dress? I, I, th- I think I remember think so. reading something like that, but I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not sure. I I don't remember that. I just remembered. Natsuhi wasn't the first character. The first character was a an unfinished yeah, prototype like for the of a character. Oh it was yeah, just the, the body. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a, was that supposed to? 
Oh, I don't even remember what that character it, was supposed it, to be, but it, it was to go. Be a goat? It was yeah. sub- because it was a, a nice insight into the process of creating a character. Yeah. Because I didn't know that the body and the head were created separately. True. I guess it makes sense for the sprite to kind of have different poses. But yeah, yeah I never thought about that. Yeah. I also like the idea that peace is supposed to represent all the characters that quote unquote auditioned for a like, role <laughs> in Umi Neko, but like failed. <laughs> I just like the idea, like, this is my fun AU where I'm like, I get to imagine, like, oh, what if like Umi Neko is just like a huge long play mm-hmm. or like a TV show series and all these characters, like, all these people are just actors, like, mm-hmm. auditioning for a role? Yeah. <laughs> and like, I just think that's a really funny idea. But yeah, that's the that's the estrangement effect that we, we read about on an interview we did for another episode of The Smoking Room. That's that apparently something Ryukishi really likes to write with and we, I as a reader also agree that that's a, a really interesting yeah. writing technique to utilize. I don't know if you've heard about the Strangement Effect Mushroom but basically it's the Umineko meta world is is you having the character stripped from it, from its peace role I guess and watching the story from the outside perspective and kind of sharing their yeah. thoughts on what's happening to their very lives on screen. That's funny. Okay, so here we've got the we've got the beheaded goat. Mm-hmm. And like the red person, also like the it it's Ronova's mm-hmm. pose. It's not the goat's pose. It's Ronova. Yeah, and like it has the pose of Ronova. Yeah, because it's here I'll send you what the goat poses actually look like. Because also, I think like. I think there's something yeah. really funny about how, like, the process of it, and, like, you could also see, like, the top dress, like, uh, the way how they draw characters and the way how it is, it really, you could see it all, like, come to fruition in Sakonia. What do you mean? Like, the way how, like, he's like, yes, Gertrude Belt, <laughs> we want those, like, dress, <laughs> like, dresses that split in the front, and, like, like, it's just so funny. Like, it's, like, he just has, like, the weirdest, like, <laughs> collection of, like, ideas. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the go body and head yeah. is, like, separated, which I really like. Peace. Peace. So yeah, Natsuhi was a rejected character for uh, Beatrice that I think such a weird, like, detail. Yeah. It thinks so yeah. Deep. Like, imagine if it was just Natsuhi. Like, what would I mean, like, like... I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just biased because I know Natsuhi's yeah. character and I know Beato's character. True. And that's why it's so weird to me. But I guess it wouldn't be it wouldn't make a difference if I didn't know those characters for what they are. Yeah, but like, Natsuhi also has like a really composed like outfit, I think, like traditional and not like this like extravagant like mm-hmm. Beato. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah. This is kind of funny to just think, think about. Now, I was just gonna go on a small rant about how I, at the start, I didn't quite like Beato's aesthetic, but then I, I grew to love it. That's for me. Okay, so this is the part where I want to get to. So this is Vigilius. So I love him. Vigilius was very curious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... Look at that jacket. That's a Kikonya jacket. That's it's not so a Umineko. Cool. That's not Umineko covering. That's Kikonya right there. What the hell? I love him. Yeah. And so, like, I actually knew about uh, Vigilius existing a long time ago. Like, I think that's, like, one of the more, like, famous rejected characters. Because, of course... It's on Erika's wiki. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's essentially, like, a gender-bend version of, like, Erika. That's what we thought until now. Oh, my God. Imagine, like... We thought it was just a gender swap, but now we know Vigilius is actually hella different from Erika. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like I think wasn't Vigilius supposed to be a son like a son of like somebody on the Beatrice Castellingos family Where side? What? Uh, what? Where did you get that from? I don't remember don't reading remember that. Really, like, no. What? Okay, I don't remember where I got that reading from. So, like, <laughs> I remember... Okay, sorry. I, uh, maybe I'm literally pulling shit out of my ass, but, like... I, so, like, I remember... Okay, so maybe I was reading either a fan theory or either was somebody... Uh, or maybe Dukishi hinted at it. That, or like, you got the so revelation the, from a higher being. <laughs> 
<laughs> or or maybe that. Like that's that's horrifying. Somebody just spoke in my ears and the I Christmas said those years. words. But so I was gonna say, like, I think like so we we all knew about like Land of the Golden Witch, which is a um scrapped E P three that was never came to fruition and and like and Vigilius was supposed to be like a anti battler but also anti Beatrice. Yeah. That's yeah. why people was like, Okay, why is he have blue hair? And he has like his last name is like Vigilius Castellinga. Like as in like I think that was like what? a like a scrapped like Castiglione. Le- like Castiglione or something and like I don't and think like it was. It, yeah, less, Castiglione. and like it's supposed to be like the same last name of like the first Beatrice. So like people were like, Oh, like yeah. this is the illegitimate child and blah 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 and like why would he have oh. a fucking like why would he have a one wing eagle eagle on like, him? This, this, no, this, no, I get it would make sense if he was actually descendant from the Castiglione family. I, but then why would he uh, do, 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 do what fucks with my mind is the hair color. I just I just I just looked at the wiki and it says um he was supposed to be the man from nineteen years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, either okay, okay, okay. It says the man from nineteen years ago. So like I, I read <laughs> It says on the wiki Then he'd be Yasu. He, what? Um, How could this like, man be Yasu? Oh my God, like, yes. I think it's really fun to think about it because like maybe he's supposed to be like a a buffed up version of like canon who knows oh my god i'm so gonna write like a man of the golden witch like forgery and he and butler are gonna have the biggest sexual tension ever (laughs) (laughs) i know i could definitely see that like yeah like just screaming each other at the top of the lungs all the time (laughs) that's so funny yeah um i could i i totally believe it man i also found it really interesting how they can just Snap yeah. their fingers and change Vergilia's so personality cool. and the way he yeah. talks. Yeah, so I think it's interesting that like the oh, for the the character Vigilius was able to split into two different characters essentially, like the character of like Vigilia, mm-hmm. which is like a soft spoken yeah. lady who like helps, like True. who essentially helps like Battler like and guide really. through him in like EP three, yeah. like and then like also splits into like Erica who like. <laughs> Is the intellectual <laughs> rapist she is? Yeah, I love her. Oh, and that's this is when Erica finally pops back in, and she's like, "Hey guys, like I am here." <laughs> I stand. Nah, yeah, mm. it's really fun. Yeah. And then, and then once the tea party is over and they all go away, we get another fan servicey, like the kind of fan service I like. I love which it. Which is we once again see Rambuda and Burn alone, and they're. Basically saying, hey, let's meet again when something else cries. And it's just amazing. Yeah. Like, it's a very good book end. Um, yeah. I think, like, I think it's really cute about, like, the whole Burn Castell and Lambda Delta thing. Like, how they're the traveling witches and they just, like, go around and bless or fuck up stories. <laughs> like, that's, like, I think that's very fun. Um, I mean, it, they essentially just bless and fuck up stories True. anywhere they go. Like, yeah. I read, um, like... For example, I read Hotabudi, which is honestly pretty trash. Please don't read Hotabudi, like, or read it just for fun. <laughs> is that the one manga about the village? And... Yeah, it's the okay. one manga about the village. Okay. Um, I read Hotabudi and I was just like, what the fuck? For, for so, those like, who I... don't know, that's also a manga Ryuki she wrote. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. But the idea of just like them being traveling witches, I think, is like a really fun idea. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just kind of feel bad because, like, I love the cast of uh, Umineko characters, like, their own cast, like, not including Lambda Delta and Burn Castell. And, like, it is kind of sad that they're kind of trapped in the cat box, so they don't get to go out into the world and, like, I mean, be weird and, like, go into other I mean, Butler stories. was in those kind of days. I mean, that, yeah. that depends on how you interpret Umineko's metaphor. Yeah. yeah, I think, like, you could think of it as more, like, Battler, like it's like a version of Battler. Yeah. Like his name is called like Butler. Doesn't he have a younger <laughs> sister in Rose Gun Days? I think he has a sister called Angel. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Like no, I I really like the whole time I remember reading Rose Gun Days. I don't think I read that much. I only read the first chunk, which is like uh-huh. nineteen something something. I'm like, reading it the... right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean the first like what's it called? Yeah. Okay, the first movement or something. 
like what first is- movement, first year, like yeah. yeah. So like I remember reading that, and I keep wishing that like Valor would just be like, well, I'm a womanizer, but I have a hot <laughs> like blonde wife at home. Yeah. Like, or oh, something like, yeah. that. <laughs> like that I keep so cool. wanting that to happen, but like yes. I was like, well, they're never gonna acknowledge it. It's fine in my imagination. True. Like Butler Wait. like goes and like visit this hot blonde lady. <laughs> uh- my mother's calling me. I'm gonna have to interrupt my audio. So I guess this is it for me. I don't know if I'll be able to come back. Um, okay. No worries. No worries. Yeah, then I guess like since this is not here, this will be the end of the last note of the Golden Witch. This is it, everyone. Thank you for listening to The Witch's Smoking Room. Have a nice, nice day. day. See, See you, you again. again. <laughs>